Good morning. I want to thank you for joining us today in our study through the Gospel of Mark. Um, before we get into our study today, I want to ask my Facebook friends and those who will be listening to this devotional, uh, if you would please be in prayer for a pastor friend of mine, uh, a young man that loves the Lord, loves the congregation that God has called him to minister to. Uh, his name is Pastor Andrew Nisley. And uh, he lives in Woodstock, New Brunswick, Pastors River Valley Baptist Church. And uh, Saturday morning, um, one of the key men in his church, Eldon Rideout, and uh, his grandson, Michael, who was actually just baptized three or four weeks ago, um, were killed in a tragic car accident in northeastern New Brunswick. And uh, there was also uh, another person that was killed in the other vehicle and some serious injuries to the fourth. So uh, I would ask you today, friends, to be involved in praying for Andy, uh, praying for the church family there, praying for the Ride Out family, and uh, praying for the people in the Woodstock area that need the Lord, um, just that God would be at work in that whole situation. And that God would just give Andy uh, the wisdom, and the discernment that he's going to need in the days ahead and the strength. And uh, that, that whole situation would just have the comfort of Almighty God upon it. So I want to thank you for praying for that today. I want to look at just a couple of verses today of Mark, of Mark chapter 6. And uh, this is immediately following the feeding of the 5,000 men plus women and children. And... Uh, Jesus in Nogeswig says in verses 46 and uh, 45 rather in 46 of Mark 6 it says and straightway he that speaking of Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida while he sent away the people and when he had sent them away he departed into a mountain to pray so uh, let me just remind you of this miracle that Jesus has just performed uh, in Mark chapter 6. We also read of this in John chapter 6. And we read in John chapter 6 as Jesus performs this miracle in the feeding of the 5,000 men plus women and children that uh, the people that partake of that miracle, they want to... Um, make Jesus their Messiah bread king, if I can put it that way. They want to crown Jesus king, not because they see him as their Messiah and as the Savior that should come, but because they saw him as one that could provide for their needs. Notice what it says in John chapter 6 and in verse 14, it says, Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, say, said, This is a truth, that prophet, that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. So we see from reading these verses that when Jesus perceived or when Jesus saw that they would come and that they would take him by force, and the reason why they wanted to take him by force was to make him a king, that Jesus departs into a mountain himself alone, and that the reason why he went into that mountain, we are told in both John 6 and in Mark 6, is to pray, so to spend some time with the Father, and that's one of the things I want us to look at today. Because certainly, if this, if prayer was an important part of the life of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, how much more, friends, do we need a peop be, to be a people of prayer? How much more do we need to have that time set aside with the Father each day that we go and that we pray to Him in prayer and indeed multiple times a day that we take the opportunities that God gives to us to be a people of prayer and to realize that uh, prayer is what puts power into our lives as the people of God. And in, in we see there in John 6 and in verse 26 and 27, it says, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat the, of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. So we see there that they wanted the bread. They did not want the bread of life. 
Um, and Jesus very clearly tells him that. He says, you're seeking me not because you want me, but because you want the bread. And you know, friends, there's many people today that would come to the Lord Jesus in that particular, same particular mentality. They do not want him for him. They want him for what they can get out of him, for what they think that he can do for them. And friends, I ask you today, do you seek Jesus simply because of what he can give you, or do you seek Jesus because of who he is? And Jesus here reprimands the crowd for that whole thing. They were seeking him because of what they could get out of him. They were not seeking him because of him. And as these people are coming, we see here in Mark 6 that Jesus compels his disciples to leave. And as he compels his disciples to leave, Jesus also sends a multitude of people away. Notice once again uh, what verse 45 tells us about the Lord Jesus. is a straight way he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida while he sent the multitude away. Jesus knew that his disciples were tired, that they were weary. And friends, sometimes as we serve the Lord, we get weary in the work, but we must be careful that we do not get weary of the work, and there's a big difference. And uh, Jesus here sends his disciples away, so that they can get some rest. And Jesus is getting ready to go into a mountain alone to pray. And before he does that, he sends the people away. And he does that to diffuse an explosive situation. They had come. They wanted to make him their brig king, their Messiah. And Jesus sends them away to um, dissolve this very explosive situation. And then the Bible tells us that Jesus goes into a mountain to pray. And friends, Jesus does this as an example to us. As a reminder to us, like if we want power in our lives as believers, that we not only need to be clean before God, but that we need to be a people of prayer. And it says in verse 46 that when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. Friends, if Jesus himself understood the importance of prayer and set the example for us as a people of God, when it comes to this area of prayer, how much do we uh, even more so as God's people need to be that people of prayer in our lives. J.C. Ryle said this about the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, none ever did such mighty works as Jesus did. None ever spake such words as Jesus spake with the authority that Jesus spake them. And none was ever so instant in prayer as was the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just give you three verses today as we bring our study to a close to, for today and you know, about the importance of prayer. In Colossians chapter 4 and in verse 2, Paul is speaking to the church of Colossae and he says this, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So Paul there, as he writes to the church of Colossae, he encourages them to continue instant in prayer. He wants them to be at that place that prayer is their constant avenue that they are coming before God in, that they are ever in this place of prayer. And he says, continue instant in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. In James chapter 1 and in verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, oh, Christian friend, have you ever been in a place where you have felt and you have known that you have lacked wisdom? If that is the case, we have this admonition from God. It says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So the Bible says when we lack wisdom that we need to come to God, the one who is the source of all wisdom, and we need to fall on our face before him and ask God to give us the wisdom that we need to live that day in a way that's honoring and pleasing to him, to give us the wisdom that we need that we may uh, serve him acceptably that day. And then in James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, it says, Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet you have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. So he encourages here, he says, listen, you have not because you ask not. 
And he says, sometimes we ask and we receive not because we ask amiss. We're not asking according to the will of God. We're asking for our own lusts and for our own desires. And Paul puts out, or, or James rather, puts out the challenge that we should not do those things, that we need to pray and ask in the will of God. So we see there the encouragement to pray. Tomorrow I encourage you to come back and we're going to see how Jesus responds to the fear of the disciples in his life. Sometimes we have fears in our life and we need to hear from God what it is that God says to us about those fears. Have a great day. Walk with the Lord. Do what it is that he wants you to do today. What a blessing it is to be able to walk in fellowship with our Creator.